Good evening and welcome to The Big Fight, a show that is young at 22, the oldest running debate show on Indian news television. I'm Sanket Upadhyay. It is that time of the year again. The union budget is going to be presented by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. This is the second budget to be presented in the middle of the pandemic. We've seen various steps apart from the budget also that have been taken, announcements made by the Finance Minister. For instance, the stimulus package, the PLI scheme, and all of that has been put to debate and to test as well. Now, whether the budget is presented in a suitcase, bahi khata, on an iPad, or whether there is halwa ceremony or not. See, the most important point is, and will always be, what is there inside the budget? Can the distribution of government spend meet the expectations and the need of an India figuring out the first wave, struggling with the second and dealing with the third? Do note, this is the first post-vaccination budget. That is an important point to mention because healthy Indians are the backbone of a healthy economy and a healthy budget can capitalize on vaccinated Indians. The other important point, how much more will we spend on education and health? So on the big fight tonight, will budget 2022 be the big booster dose for the Indian economy or the big precautionary dose? Because uh, in India, we like to call it that. Not booster, but precaution dose. Let me now introduce our first guest to be able to understand this issue. Uh, you know, budget is an extremely complicated matter and uh, we must speak to some experts who can simplify it and make the common people, the layman, understand what it actually means and, it, and its importance. I can't think of anyone else but my guest, Dr. Amit Mitra, Principal Chief Advisor to the Chief Minister of West Bengal and also the Finance Minister of West Bengal. Thank you very much, Dr. Mitra. My first question to you is, would you like to tell us about the state of the economy in which we will see this budget coming in? I think this is, uh, it's a very important question. I must say it's, it's a very grim, if not dangerous state of the economy. That has to be taken into consideration in the budget making process. First, unemployment rate has hit close to 8%. That means 30 million people in India today are officially unemployed. That's three crores people. And salaried unemployment has reached a huge number. At the same time, and this is what is dangerous, at the same time, inflation, wholesale in, uh, price inflation, has crossed 13.5%, 13.5%. And consumer price inflation is now at 5.6%. Uh, it's hitting towards the 6% red line. Now, the two things happening together is not seen in economies. It happened in the 70s in the United States with oil shock. This is called stagflation. Budget has to squarely address stagflation, both inflation and unemployment hitting the common people simultaneously. Mm. Second, debt GDP ratio, debt is growing at a phen phenomenal rate. Debt GDP ratio has gone up to 74%. And what is sad is much of this debt is being pushed upon on the states of India. Their, their debt has gone up hugely. Next point, household spending is still below 2019. Households are not spending. Savings rate has fallen and investment has no, investors have no appetite. Why? Because of completely wrong policy, United States, a 172 lakh crore economy, 23 trillion economy has grown by 7%. Highest in 40 years, why? They followed a demand stimulation policy by putting money into the hands of the common people. I heard one of the industrialists a moment ago saying, lower end of the people. That's where the dim, uh, ma maximum marginal propensity to consume. You give them 100 rupees, they'll spend 99 rupees. Now, instead, what the government has been doing, unfortunately, is looking at tinkering on the supply side. Cut corporate taxes, expecting them to invest. Now, there's no demand. Corporates put that into their books. 
and that becomes profit. Do you know in the middle of the pandemic, corporate India has the highest profit in four years. Mm, it's not profit, true. it's artificial. Absolutely. So therefore, there you are, US economy going at 7% in a $23 trillion economy because they gave $2,500 to $3,000 in the hands of the lowest entities, the common people. This government didn't do so. It is cutting taxes that Ronald Reagan had done in correcting some kind of a business cycle, not a pandemic. So my submission is high unemployment, high inflation, stagflation, debt growth. All these are staring at the Honorable Union fin Finance Minister. Mm -hmm. Household spending not recovering because you're not putting money into the hands of the common people. Savings rate not enough. Investment, investing, investors are not increasing plant, equipment, machinery and demanding more, which is the what you they know, wanted. Dr. Mitra, we, we asked this question of the uh, representatives of the government and they say that uh, giving the poorest of the poor free ration was one such way of reaching out to so many people, 80 crores. That is what the government says. That's the, that's, these are the direct beneficiaries. The cash transfers that are happening into the accounts of the farmers and the poor is a form of, you know, empowering the, the poorest of the poor. If you look at the package, Mr. Upadhyay, that the central government had given, I had analyzed it before. Hmm. In the first package, only 1% was fiscal cash transfer. So the crash transfer is very small. Now, I must also say, if you want supply side, you want quick results. I'll give you an example. In West Bengal, we've cut the stamp duty for property registration by 2%. That's a supply side measure. What has happened? Immediately, real estate has bounced back. Our revenues have shot up. It's instantaneous. So what you have to pick on the supply side are things that will happen immediately. Now, let me also say that very, very important all of this is to acknowledge the mistaken policy that you're making. Mm -hmm. So is it going to be a budget? where they continue with the supply side policies which have failed over these years. Sure. Unlike United States, UK, Japan, Germany, Italy have all followed demand side. Will they acknowledge that? And will you see a tectonic shift in the nature of the budget and say, sorry, we made a mistake. We didn't understand the macroeconomy uh, well enough in a pandemic situation, not business cycle correction. Now we will move to demand stimulation so that private sector has demand therefore invests in plant equipment machinery hmm. which further which is the real supply side hmm. generator and let me also point out msme small and medium enterprise very labor intensive sector encourage that informal sector has collapsed in india you know we know bring the informal sector back and formalize it by giving it incentives to do so sure. so sure. will the budget be a tectonic shift into admitting the past policy, wrong policies, and, and, and course new correcting policies. it. Fair, fair, fair course enough. Correct. It really is a complete rethinking. Okay. Or will it be all of the same or uh, damn squib budget? Now, see, uh, another, another thing, man, this is my final question, Dr. Mitra. Usually, what the government say, and I'm sure uh, as the finance minister of a state, this is also your problem. A budget is an exercise to decide what is being spent where, right? And for that, the government needs money. So one of the ways the government tried to increase its pool of cash is by uh, having a you know monetization pipeline or looking of ways to uh, to disinvest and then raise some funds to reinvest into the economy into the people for welfare schemes. How do you look at this? See, is this again, a sound uh, way of going is, about? Yes, is, what is interesting is this government since it came to office has disinvested, you know where? Profit-making PSUs. Public sector units running at a profit get disinvested. I have a full list of those. And out of the five, six years, they've only done three lakh crores of all kinds of, this is like selling family silver. So my point is, you have the capacity to do things like you have monetized what is there with the Reserve Bank, It'll give you resources. It'll give you many forms of resources which are available to you. And you have, I, in December, Union Finance Minister said, 
that our disinvestment policy has failed. I mean, so far we have not got anything. Yesterday, I heard the secretary of disinvestment saying, sorry, it is too complicated. We are not able to even disinvest a profit making uh, uh, petroleum sector. Mm. Can you imagine that? So what I'm saying is they, they have failed in the disinvestment because they were trying to sell, sell family silver. What you need is mm. other options of generating resources. So a uh, uh, union finance minister mm. has to think of a tectonic shift mm. in generating resources. There are lots sure. of options in generating resources. Sure. Those are not being explored. Mm. And they themselves are admitting that we have not been able to do any disinvestment. Only strategic disinvestment there is in Air India, which they talk about. That, uh, other than that, five years they've been selling mm. shares of profit-making public sector units, mm. dozens and dozens of them. Hmm. But not much. It's like selling family silver. Okay. It has no strategy. We, we, we'll have to see what happens uh, in this speech. Is it going to be a tectonic shift, as you suggest? Or is it going to be uh, a principle that has been followed so far? Or, or a mix of both? That will be interesting. Well, so, whether it will be just the same uh, uh, budget, which will uh, be a damp squib, ah. continuing status quo. Is that what you're going to see? Okay. Are you going to see a radical shift, sure. admission of past failure and say, OK, we understand the macroeconomics from the rest of the world and we will move in that direction. That's sure. the real fundamental macro sure. challenge. All right. Dr. Mitra, thank you very much for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Th thank you very much. Indeed. OK. Uh, Amitabh Dubey, member of the Congress party, is with us. Rajat Sethi is an economist and a political analyst, views lean towards the government. Professor Geeta Bhatt supports the BJP, is a political analyst. And Jasmine Shah, a spokesperson of the Ahmadmi party. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, we heard Dr. Mitra articulating his views. We'll begin with you, Rajat Sethi. Uh, you know, on the basis of what he said, or the concerns he raised about the manner in which the budgeting exercise is being done and the economy is being run. Do you think that this is definitely a golden opportunity for us? See, the first budget in a post-vaccinated scenario, where we are a majority of us vaccinated, right? One can expect that the economy will get better. Luckily, thank God, even now the impact of the third wave has not been the same as the second wave. Are these good markers or good signs to, to really have a radical shift in the budget? Uh, Sanket ji, I was carefully listening to what Dr. Mitra had to say and I really would ex was expecting that he would remove his partisan blinkers and, and talk on absolute facts. Yeah. Uh, one thing that is clear is that there have been a few clear uh, wins for the government. They were One year back, we were sitting on your program, uh, Sanket ji, there were a lot of doomsday argument uh, that the whole economy is going to, uh, you know, sink and, and they will be, uh, you will have to spend, spend, spend and incur a lot of expenditures uh, to the tune, even the economy's macro uh, numbers were not uh, going to support it. Still, uh, all of these predictions from these eminent economists was hinting at just the simple argument that you ought to spend. But I think what the government did very carefully was to have a very targeted spending plan that was tailored only to the absolute uh, bottom of the pyramid uh, population. They kept it on a focused, targeted manner. And the, on the other side, they were very focused on how should the next generation of jobs be created. And look at the PLI scheme. Two lakh crore rupees that were, that were earmarked for 13 sectors of PLI. And the amount of success that the PLI has brought in, that today there are so many industries uh, which are right now lobbying the government to, to have their industry being included into the PLI scheme. Just the mobile sector alone in one quarter uh, uh, resulted in more than 22,000 jobs that were created. The mobile exports from India grew by more than 250% right in the middle of uh, the second Delta COVID wave. So you can understand that certain schemes of the government have been phenomenally uh, successful and have been targeted towards the pain points of the economy. Now going forward in the next one year, I understand that there are a few global headwinds which are going to challenge the government, are going to reduce the fiscal elbow room that the government has. And the biggest one is the global inflation wave that we are seeing, which is going to persist for the next financial year. Okay. 
I think this, along with the Ukrainian crisis that is unfolding, might shoot up the oil prices. But even you know, further you know, you know, you know, you know one, one point that was raised, and this has been politically raised and raised by some economists as well. And let me go to Mr. Amitabh Dubey and and ask him, Mr. Dubey, is that uh, should you? spend more or fix the supply side or do you fix the demand first? What do you do first? So, uh, Sakit, uh, clearly the government's focus all, uh, for the last couple of years has been, as Dr. Amit Mitra said, on supply side. And there's expended a lot of fiscal space on this, even the PLI scheme that Rajat was talking about. A lot of money has gone into this. Now, despite what the government uh, keeps insisting that we put a lot of money into the bottom of the pyramid, Certainly, they did it at the peak of the COVID crisis because they had to. People, you know, lives would have been lost. But if you look at a longer time stretch, um, the amount of money going into demand side has been much more than what has been spent on supply side. So we've had corporate tax cuts rather than very serious money going in terms of direct transfers. If you look at the current situation, um, it's you just look at the statistics, right? We have a serious problem of inequality. Um, the latest statistics showed that the bottom 20% in the five years, in the past five years, their real incomes have gone down by 53%. Mm. Now, that is a stunning, it's a real crisis, and it's a crisis that goes beyond COVID. And the policy framework of this government has been completely misdirected and is not dealing with the inequality problem at all. So I think it's a question that they, they, I don't think they acknowledge the reality that they need to deal with, and therefore the policies are not answering the problem that we truly face, which is inequality. Okay, uh, Jasmine Shah, you know, uh, if we were to keep uh, state versus center dynamics uh, uh, out for a moment, we'll come to that. But what should ideally be expected of this budget, according to you? Sanket, let me first uh, make sure that all our viewers understand that our economy is in a state of absolute shock. That's the reality of our current times. We are in the middle of an inequality crisis. We are in the middle of an inflation crisis and we are in the middle of an unemployment crisis. And it is to that extent that uh, Amitabh yeah. just mentioned that, you know, the, the, the income of the bottom 20 percentage of the people has dropped by 50 percent. This is almost historic. We've never seen this kind of numbers. Unemployment two years back itself was at a 45 year low and it's further increased to 8.1%. So clearly something radical is required. And you know, this the, the description of what the economy requires doesn't change from the last year. When we saw countries around the globe directly increasing the spending power of the people in the bottom half of the pyramid. But what did we do? We put a completely supply driven package. It was announced that you know, 20 percentage of GDP is the scale of our stimulus. The actual spending has been less than 2 percent. And that also has not been focused at the poorest. And that is the kind of shock which is not only going to, I mean, the effect of this will come for years to come. Just look at what happened last year. Even in the middle of a pandemic, the healthcare budget of the government of India actually reduced. Nobody, I mean, people were shocked that this could even happen. You know, so you are giving corporate tax cuts and you're cutting the healthcare budget. And look at, at the other end, a progressive state government, such as the Delhi government. We are spending 25 percentage of our budget in education. In the middle of the pandemic, we increased our healthcare spending from 12 percentage to 16 percentage of our budget. Both of these are the highest across the country. So the government, <coughs> the, the, the recipe is very clear. You need to put money, you need to increase the spending power of the people, you need to find ways to reach not just the farmers, you know, and not just the farmers who own land, but also the farm laborers, uh, those who are tenants, but also the people at the end, just saying that I'm giving free rations and therefore I've done direct benefits, that's not enough, you know, that's a pittance. You look at the, the percentage of uh, uh, average per capita income that other countries are giving directly to the people to increase the spending power and you look at that in... Uh, uh, India. So clearly, we have our priorities completely wrong. We are not spending on foundational uh, uh, sectors such as mm. health and education, which is what will build a new India. You know, just making temples and and creating a, a environment of fear and enmity between castes and religions because elections are always around the corner is actually going to chase away investors from India, which is what we are seeing. Globally, the, the performance, the perception of India is suffering. New capital is really not coming. And by citing a few schemes which are working fine, 
you can't you know brush okay. the entire state of the economy okay so i think the point shock. that keeps coming back over and over again is what do you focus on do you focus on fixing the supply side uh, for the layman fixing the supply side uh, basically means that you uh, you get industries running you give them a stimulus package you make sure that the factories keep churning products or do you fix the demand side which means uh, professor geeta bhat get so much money in the hands of people that it will all circulate in the economy and in a very organic way force many of these industries to keep on producing so what what arm should we concentrate on the argument that jasmine as well as amitabh dubey are making is that the government seems to be obsessed with one arm and ignoring the other ideally don't you think that a, the more robust thing to do would be to make these two run parallelly professor bhat see sanket ji uh, no doubt that you know the that the consumption has to increase i, I mean almost everyone is agreeing on that point and also you know the msme sector we need to revive the msme sector and the informal sector that also you know there there the employment has to you know it has to be regenerated these are the facts but the fact is also there that we are in unprecedented times and because of this covid condition the pandemic across the world if you see uh, you know the people were talking about the inequality report you see the inequality report also talks about that it is since 1980s onwards that the inequality across the world has been increasing and de definitely you know the the poor have been at the receiving end but at the same time you see the government has been trying its best to uh, to to cater to those who those who are poor more more than 1 lakh crore has been sent for providing of food grains uh, to the poor and at the same time you know exports have been increasing yes there are challenges but it is not that the picture is so grim that you know that uh, we cannot look at the brighter side the, the exports have been increased not only in the mobile production as it was just being discussed even the agriculture products you know there has been a 21% increase in the exports over there mm -hmm. in in whether it is vegetable or whether it is uh, in terms of uh, wheat and uh, in terms of rice so uh, time and again uh, th there are challenges there is no one is saying that the challenge is not there but trying to portray that as if nothing number of startups largest number of startups uh, in the country has seen in the last couple of yeah, years companies Minister turning unicorns also. you know companies turning unicorns so there is a brighter side yes there are challenges and the whole world is facing it uh, amitabh dubey how would you respond i'll come to you See. rajat but amitabh how would you respond to that that argument that yes there are challenges but there is a bright side also is that bright See. side enough yeah see the you you can always uh, cherry pick data points there'll always be positive data points about unicorns and and startups but the reality is this that despite all the talk of uh, make in india and manufacturing um uh, and atmanirbhar bharat uh, the the percent the share of manufacturing in our gdp is at a 10 to 15 year low at 14% roughly and this is after the prime minister's uh, entire uh, initiative to woo investment you know photo opportunities and all of that and as a result of the fact that manufacturing in india as sure. is at an almost all time low uh, certainly in, in in recent history we have no jobs being generated uh, because manufacturing is obviously where a lot of good quality jobs are generated for yeah. for people and which is why you see students on the streets in up and bihar so certainly uh, okay. you know you can say that there's a lot of startups but when your investment is overall at a multi year low mm. that's obviously a small part of the story and the larger mm. picture is completely mm. at variance with that narrative okay okay rajat before i come to you i would also like to welcome mr subhash chandra garg former finance secretary i am going to come to you uh, uh, mr garg in j exactly a minute uh, just want to take a comment from uh, uh, from rajat sethi to that discussion that we were having and then immediately after that i'll come to you Rajat, you know, Sanket just saying that the proportion of manufacturing as a percentage of the GDP has remained consistent doesn't mean that the GDP isn't growing. If you look at what the IMF is product is, is projecting, the only emerging economy and the only large economy that is that is scheduled to grow in the next uh, financial year, it is only India. The rest, everybody, including China, 
is not uh, on the is not going to grow on the expected lines and this is what the latest imf report is saying so if you put all uh, the sort of uh, uh, you know uh, the headwinds and the tailwinds together and look at uh, one country uh, versus the other country india is firmly positioned to outgrow all its peer groups and also match the growth numbers uh, that perhaps countries sure. like china and the other uh, developing countries are posting sure. so we are currently heading in the right direction there are going to be a few headwinds as i have clearly mentioned to you and there are going to be a few extra steps that the government okay. will have to take which is going to be cent centered around the balancing sure. act between demand and sure. the supply fiscal room is going to reduce because of global inflation they can't spend spend and spend in this fiscal year again the fiscal uh, uh, deficit has to be tamed it cannot be a runaway deficit as you've seen in the past two financial years okay. this is i think mandatory and for this the uh, okay. the spending okay. will I've, also I've, have to be balanced i've completely out. run out of time on this discussion uh, mr dubey mr sethi Professor Bhatt as well as Jasmine Shah thank you very much we'll of course discuss this more as uh, we build up to the uh, to the budget announcement thank you very much for joining us i would like to introduce uh, mr subhash chandra garg uh, he's with us nilesh shah chairman of the association of mutual funds in india an md of quoted mahindra asset management company is also with us uh, vikas vasal national managing partner uh, tax at the grant thornton bharat is also with us uh, Thank you Naila Lal Kidwai chair of the India Sanitation Coalition at Fikki is also with us thank you very much ma'am for joining us but Mr Garg will begin with you you've done this exercise but uh, but luckily for you uh, the majority of the exercise was done at a time when covid was not around but there was a slow down so you are aware of this discussion that we are having what can the government do differently and i again lay stress on the fact that this is a post vaccination budget which means a majority of this country is vaccinated what are your expectations what do you think the government can do i think that's a very fair comment uh, uh, my innings ended before the covid uh, struck but let's keep uh, some facts in mind before we um, uh, sort of think of how we going to go ahead in the next year's budget the three years including the year 1920 and two years of covid uh, have produced a total of less than 6% of growth so we have um, about 1.5 to 2% of growth on an average for last three years that is what has set us back our goal to reach to a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2425 stand shifted to minimum 26 27 so we have a that kind of situation we also have a very precarious employment situation our uh, workers participation rate is quite low unemployment rate keeps on fluctuating but that's on the higher side in total employment rate is much lower than what it is for last 5 6 years um, and uh, that makes a lot of indians about half them of employable outside the workforce right so that is the difficult situation and the third factor i think which we should keep in mind is that the government's uh, fiscal ability has become quite a straight jacketed uh, mm. uh, because the decisions which have been taken because what the government had to probably do to give you one example um, the food subsidy uh, we produce about uh, 225 million tons of wheat and rice Uh, we consume about 170 175 million tons of rice uh, there is a surplus standing surplus every year of about 40 50 million tons and the government buys 100 million tons normally spends uh, 50 million tons last two years it is giving the free ration which takes away about 30 million tons so despite all efforts of liquidating the food stocks you end up adding 10 to 15 million tons every year to the fci stock the result is that your subsidy has crossed uh, about 3 lakh crores last year this year it is going to cross 4 lakh crores of wheat and rice which you produce of about 6 lakh crores the subsidy is 4 lakh crores that is the kind of straight jacketed we 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 have gotten to hmm. our capital expenditure is also on the roads rail and the metro and the housing and the defense expenditure which is stuck so i think we have a situation which is quite difficult yeah. we should keep in mind and then decide about what to do i think it's time to 
sort of base making make basic reforms the government started doing it last year uh, by sort of privatizing offering to privatize banks and others that agenda has suffered so i think first thing which the government need to do in my judgment is to uh, sort of implement that decision that uh, minimum government maximum governance which implies the business uh, entities of government to be privatized so that's one agenda hmm. that will create a lot of value on the private side so sure. that's one hmm. second refocus the government on what the government should be doing and that is public goods and services and also redistribution to the poor uh, hmm. uh, so if we get resources i'll just give you one statistics before i close in this opening remarks sure we talk a lot about the disinvestment we've been keeping 2 lakh 1.75 lakh crores as target but still every year we make fresh investment of 2 lakh crores in the equity and we have been able to get only about 50000 crores 30 37000 crores so unless we get out of this we can't free up resources for the kind of public goods and services which are required and the redistribution i think i'll come back more but basic restructuring sure. of the governance and the system of uh, sort of running public sector and the focus on the uh, common uh, of the public goods and services would sure. be sure okay uh, dr pranab sen former chairman of the national statistical commission is also now with us dr sen uh, you know a, lo- a lot is said about how the government is spending right now and in our previous discussion we were talking about how the government has concentrated more or this was the criticism more on fixing the uh, supply and not paid much attention in fixing the demand side uh, what is your assessment and in this in this part of the broadcast we are going to concentrate more on solutions what each one of you has to offer as a suggestion uh, to the uh, to the finance minister uh, dr sen Uh, Sanket, I mean, let me be clear. When we were discussing this issue, roughly uh, seven, eight, nine months back, hmm. supporting demand was the critical element because capacities had not died yet. When the second wave hit, and you had you didn't have a national lockdown you had state level lockdowns that's when capacities got destroyed once capacities are destroyed you have you cannot use demand management as the first tool of choice mm-hmm. you have to move to to try to recreate those capacities so supply side focus is the appropriate way to go now mm-hmm. unfortunately it was done earlier where demand management was required hmm. uh now doing demand management i think would be counterproductive at the moment a little bit of supply side initiatives would be welcome but that's that's very important and i'm going to come back to you uh, for you to explain in greater detail why you think so but nena lal kidway uh what are your suggestions what according to you should be the key highlight of this uh, of this budget how is this a big opportunity for us so it's always tough to follow on the heels of a friend and uh, someone who i have a high regard for like pranab hmm. but the call from industry is to have demand uh, uh, increased uh, the big concern uh, in the consumer product companies right now is how rural demand is failing and typically rural demand is what carried the economy forward uh, they have enough capacity to feed uh, that consumption and demand should it go up but the fact is and it that i was just looking to see where in riga stood right now uh, and the absolute amounts are still of course very large but uh, there has been a negative uh, uh, growth there as i understand from may almost uh, minus 11.3% year on year so in riga itself which has been uh, such an interesting way of ensuring demand consumption job creation and such an opportunity to create rural infrastructure sanitation water check dams i mean you name it uh, is certainly uh, something i would like to see uh, rejuvenated and taken at a higher clip and one of uh, the other things that we have been looking at from city <clears throat> is uh, to look at uh, an urban uh, enriga as well one which looks at uh, providing for uh, 
exactly what we do in the rural areas for urban, given what has happened in terms of job losses and the entire service sector uh, uh, issues that we are facing in terms of job loss. So all of this with a view to create demand. Uh, and they, uh, Pranam is right that there are, of course, supply side disruptions. Uh, there's a lot of the MSME that is still failing and we have to work to, I uh, need actually right work to sort that out. But there's also unutilized capacity sitting in uh, companies, uh, by and large, below 70% right now. And we are not going to see private sector investment go up till that capacity utilization moves up. Mm-hmm. So the trick here is that it is a, a very uh, a K-shaped type of economy. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are specific solutions for specific industries that will have to uh, be looked at. But demand would certainly help in terms of getting uh, the private sector capacity utilizations up where the uh, utilization is still uh, uh, low. Uh, Industry, of course, is going to need uh, 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 support across the board, the MSMEs in particular. Credit uh, is an issue. Uh, Supply side disruptions continue. And this is a whole new normal which everyone has to work to. And sadly, what this means for industry, which is usually worked to efficiency, Industry is having to look at resilience, which also means that they have to provide for more inventory, provide for some leeway in terms of capacity as well. And all of this comes at a cost. Uh, I would just add a second and very worrying uh, aspect is inflation, input costs going up. I mean, you know, crude, you name it. Uh, Companies are seeing input costs go up enormously. Logistic costs are a big issue uh, across industries. So this too is really the big bugbear, the bull in the China shop right now, which uh, clearly needs to be watched closely. Very very interesting points that have been made. Uh, Vikas Vassal, I want to come to you now. See, the point is, and and this was uh, somehow briefly touched upon in our discussion, in our political discussion, uh, real growth of the economy versus uh, the recovery because of the sudden fall in the economy, Uh, lockdown-infused fall. Uh, since you are uh, a tax expert, National Managing Partner Tax at the Grand Thornton Bharat, I, I want to know from you in our existing taxation systems, do you think this, this is good enough to support uh, any form of ambitious budgeting exercise or what, what can be done differently, both in direct and indirect? So if we look at the last few budgets and the policy intent with which the government has laid out the previous budgets and other policy measures, the intent is to move towards a very simplified regime and do away with exemptions and deductions. Therefore, I think in this year's budget as well, we are unlikely to see any new exemptions or deductions uh, in the budget. I think I will be happy if we do not see any, if we do not see any new taxes or surcharges despite the various economic compulsion that the government has this year. Having said that, there is a lot that can be done in order to make ease of doing business in India, uh, uh, give it a further boost. For example, there are many revenue neutral measures both on the direct tax side as well as on the indirect tax side which could be taken. Just to give you an example, uh, for example, on the TDS or the TCS, which is a, which has actually become a TDS regime now instead of tax directory as source for the industry. There are a lot of things that can be done to rationalize the entire regime and ease the burden on the industry. There are, as per a study done by us, there are only four sections which contribute almost 80% of the TDS revenue for the government, whereas you have more than three dozen sections on the statute. So can those be done away with? Can those be rationalized? The TDS rate itself vary from 0.1% to 40%. Can these also be rationalized? So there's a lot that can be done on simplifying the compliance. GST also, I think it's high time to have a relook at the entire regime. GST has achieved its due objective for which it was set. Now there is a need to relook at the, all the slab rates and also probability of introducing an amnesty scheme in order to cut down on the existing litigation which continues. The erstwhile amnesty schemes or the dispute resolution schemes. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you because amnesty schemes do exist. I remember those announcements. 
So Sanket, very, a very relevant point in the current context, especially when the government and the industry both have been vociferous in saying that we want to cut down on the litigation. The erstwhile amnesty schemes or the dispute resolution schemes, both on the indirect taxes, which was primarily services tax and direct tax, have met with huge success. Mm. I think there is a time to relook at the existing pending litigation as well. So that can also be done. Uh, 15% tax rate for the new manufacturing, a great move, but services also contribute a lot to the overall economy as well as the employment. I think there is a need to have a relook at the 15% tax rate for the entire industry. May not be this time, but I think we should move towards that direction. Sure. Okay. And once we have done it for manufacturing and others, I think there is a demand from the other businesses as well, whether it's the limited liability partnerships or the individuals also to have a rule look at their tax regime and lower down the tax rates, uh, which are the effective burden on the tax rate for them. Okay. Mr. Nilesha, uh, what are your expectations from this budget? Uh, what do you, and again, reminding our viewers constantly that this could perhaps be a big opportunity or a chance for the government to uh, shift gears. Last year, we were unvaccinated. Vaccination has a direct impact on the economy. You can't be very, very ambitious if you are, if you, if you are dealing with a pandemic. This time around with immunity provided, what are your expectations of the government from the budget? This budget has to be pro-growth budget and pro-consumption budget. There is uneven recovery in economy. We are selling more SUVs and tractors than pre-pandemic levels, but we are selling less entry-level bikes compared to pre-pandemic level. We are importing highest volume and value of gold this year. At the same time, gold loans, which shows distressed borrowing, is also at all-time high level. So, as other panelists mentioned, we need to support consumption. Now, one is to give a fish to a person and second is to teach fishing to a person. We obviously have to do both. So Naina's suggestion on urban manreka is one way to provide temporary support to people. But at the end of the day, we have to create employment. There are three sectors where maximum employment can be generated. One is real estate and construction. They were contributing about 12% of GDP in 2014-15. Today, they are now at 7.5% of GDP. How can we support housing and construction, whether it's tax incentive, whether it is related to stamp duty concession, whether it is some other steps. But housing and, employment, housing and real estate supported will create employment and jobs, and it will absorb people at the bottom of the pyramid. Mm. Textiles is one sector where India has leadership right from cotton and man-made fibers all the way up to weaving into fabric. But we are nowhere there comparable to even countries like Bangladesh and Vietnam in garmenting. And when you sell fabric, you get one price. When you convert that into a garment, you get completely different value. If you can encourage garmenting, normally it will absorb women employees. When a person, you know, when a male guy gets employment, many a times women in the family end up leaving a job but when a woman gets employment alternate jobs are created as you know they hire maid or they go and eat out somewhere so we need to encourage textiles especially in garmenting for creating jobs for women employed the second thing is related to uh, you know financing our spending now one can raise tax revenues or one can raise non tax revenues on tax revenues, we have already seen improvement from 9.5% of GDP in terms of tax to GDP ratio to 11.5% this year hmm. as tax rates have been cut for corporate sector. So we have to focus on non-tax revenue. So Basji mentioned about divestment. Let me focus on asset monetization. The government has created lots of assets. Indian banking system is having 7 lakh crore of liquidity. Sanket that's, Sanket, that's 7 lakh crore of liquidity. Governments are sitting on cash balance between central and state government about 4 lakh crore. 
11 lakh crore are lying in Indian banking system and government kitty. Now, can we bring that money into asset monetization? On one side, government can spend on infrastructure. Other side, it can monetize existing investments and fund the spending without letting the path of fiscal prudence. Hmm. So su- support consumption, especially at the bottom of the pyramid hmm. and also in urban India. Encourage employment generating industries like housing and textiles. Hmm. And third, do asset monetization to raise resources so that you don't let go the path of fiscal prudence. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Ch- uh, Mr. Garg, I want to come back to you. Uh, you wanted to elaborate on what you uh, were saying. And then after that, you know, this, this very strange situation where Dr. Sen seems to suggest that now it will be, if I, and correct me if I am wrong, Dr. Sen, you said that it will be counterproductive if we, <coughs> if we uh, continue with investment on, the, on fixing the demand side. Right You're now right, is Shankar. the time to I build capacities. That. Who, so, who's uh, the answer, me or Subhash? No, no, no. I, I'm saying I'm going to come back to you on this. Okay. On this because so Miss, Miss Nenalal Kidwai had the exact opposite of what you said uh, in I her assessment. That too. Yeah, uh, so, uh, Mr. Subhash Gar. See, I think uh, let's go by the facts. There is uh, definitely a problem on the consumption side. Hmm. Even last quarter, uh, the consumption data is lower than two years back. So one area which has not uh, sort of recovered is consumption. And the consumption, the largest consumption is item is the food, uh, which tells you that if the food consumption is lower, the poor are not able to have even minimal requirement of food and therefore they need support. The other data also tells you that if wholesale inflation is so high and the retail is not that uh, high, also uh, tells you that the ability of the manufacturers to pass on uh, the cost to the um, uh, to the retailers or to the consumers is small. So there are many, very many, and there are many surveys which have also brought out the employment um, number, the uh, the people getting out of the workforce, and so so I think something will have to be done for the consumption support. Now, what do you do? Uh, in my judgment, there are three basic classes of uh, consumers. There is one class, which is which I call um, uh, literally the poorest of the poor, indigent kind of people who are not able to earn because of their physical ability or age uh, disability or whatever. Um, and that number in India is very large. It's about six to seven crore house, uh, households, which are not able to do it. These have to be assisted by uh, the assistance from the government. They can't be provided, uh, uh, they can't be taught uh, to sort of catch fish. The fish part is the for the other. Mm. So I think one program, um, we have multiple programs to uh, go to this food subsidy, cash assistance, uh, Jandhan account assistance. I think we need to consolidate for this uh, group of six to seven crores and give them in one form, probably a direct uh, cash benefit support, which is the easiest. It will decomplicate the the administrative system, number of programs and deliver assistance in the form in which they can use it most. Then the second group Mm -hmm. is the one which uh, is employed in the MSMEs, in farms, elsewhere. That number is also very large, but they have suffered wage loss and many of them have also suffered the the job loss. They uh, needed assistance to uh, sort of get on with their job. I'll just illustrate one, for example, how sometimes we don't make the right kind of policy. There are about two crore street vendors. We came up with a scheme to provide them 10,000 rupees loan. Now, if you provide these people who have lost the ability to even carry on with their jobs and all working capital, they are even otherwise very stretched. Now you give them some loan. Now keeping account of that loan and expecting them to earn to pay the loan interest is I think not uh, a very, why couldn't we have provided them the assistance? I think still there are very large number of these kind of people mm. and um, in these very small businesses. This, this so is we, very, very interesting because the government decided to go the loan way. I remember this discussion that is, is a dole better than a loan and then there is there are these, these two 
schools of thought really that what what should you really it's not do? all i think uh, you need, they needed working capital assistance the government was providing them working capital assistance mm-hmm. of 10000 rupees which is a very small sum but it was being provided in the form of loans why it's not a very uh, it, the outlay was 20000 crores at, uh, in in total that 20000 crores if we can give 70000 crores to farmers who so have not suffered well. correct right who have not suffered ah. uh, that much um, they they uh, they very interesting. very very right. interesting and this this way you could have actually fixed you know uh, this is an informal sector and this could have really gotten so many people going at a time when they were worst hit. Dr. Sen, I want to come to you now, uh, but before I do that, some questions on the Ku app. Maybe you can answer these or, uh, or the point that we were discussing. Priyal says, will the new agenda of decarbonizing the economy help in boosting the economy? Dhruv says, amid a third wave of COVID and emerging concerns over Omicron variant, there's threat to India's GDP growth. Dr. Sen, uh, which one of these questions would you like to answer or, or would you like to fix this anomaly for us, this, this uh, difference of opinion between you and Ms. Kidwai? Very polite difference. Well, let me and first, and first, and take, <laughs> first take the, the cool thing. Ah. The answer to both are yes. Hmm. All right, and the, you, know, you, you can think it through, but both questions the answer is yes mm-hmm. how you do it is important and okay. that would take a lot longer to do sure there is no fundamental disagreement between nana and me mm. all right mm. or for for that matter what subhash just said mm. because the point that i was trying to make is at the moment the category of people who are hurting relative to what they were just a little while ago are those who have lost jobs because the MSME sector and the informal sector has collapsed. Okay. So when Nana was was uh, talking about the about rural demand, mm-hmm. you really need to see it in the context of the fact that agriculture, which accounts for nearly fifty percent of the rural of rural incomes, mm. has done very well. Correct. It's the remaining fifty percent which Subhash was referring to. Which has done badly. Now, the point is that will a demand impetus help that second 50%? Very interesting. Very, very. And my answer is no, Hmm. because what Subhash said is is absolutely right. You need these, these little firms, the informal sector, the MSME firms, you need them to revive their production. Okay which will provide jobs. That's the durable demand. We can always create demand by pumping money into the hands of the consumer, Hmm. but that is unsustainable. Hmm. At some point, that that pipeline is going to have to close. Okay. That pipeline is what is important last year. Hmm. My view is now we should focus on reviving those components of the economy. This is really the MSMEs, which are dying. Okay, okay. I've run out of time and uh, if, if I don't wrap up now, this is going to hurt our economy because I have to take a, an ad break. Thank you very much for joining us, all of you all. Very interesting, engaging discussion. Let's see what the budget entails. Good night and goodbye.